What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to an episode of the Steelers Breakdown Podcast. Nick Fairball here, as always, and I got a special guest today, Ben Raven from N Live, our Lions guy over in the Michigan affiliate. Ben, how you doing today, man? I'm doing all right. We are close to cut day. We are close to the regular season. You know, the the monotonous the monotony of camp is almost over. Well, it is over, but we've got one last preseason game left to do- go. So it's it's about to get better. Uh, it, it's about <laughs> to get better with the Steelers because I think we'll finally have to stop talking about this quarterback competition, which I'm excited about. But the monotony of Brandon Ayuk is not going to stop. So I, I have that going over here. Yeah, like day uh, 17. <laughs> yeah, right. Please. Uh, I. I'm saying this right now. Please, something soon. 49ers get trade him, sign him, do something. I ready to move on from Ayuk Watch, which has been going on for like five months and has intensified the past three weeks. I am ready to move on. But the Steelers do have a preseason game tomorrow, believe it or not. And so did the Lions, and they face off in Detroit. Ben, fun fact, this will be the first time I am ever going to be in the state of Michigan or Detroit. I have never been. So this is going to be new for me. Um so I'm I'm excited. This is one of the NFL cities I haven't been to yet. I've been to I think 22 of the 32. So yeah. Well, welcome. Well, well happy to have you, man. Uh, I think you'll like Ford Field a lot. The press box is great. Uh, too bad it's not a regular season game to get that full atmosphere, but you'll still get a good picture for it and maybe grab yourself a Coney Dog while you're downtown. Yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> I will. And then uh, I hope the the Detroit media dinner uh, does not try to do what. Las Vegas did last year, which was try to make a Pittsburgh salad, a Primani sandwich, it did not go well. But they tried to put in all the Pittsburgh they could, and it did not go well um, <laughs> with anybody. So uh, let's hope that they stick to their guns. Even the Steelers last week when Buffalo came to town, tried their own little hand on beef on Weck. Again, did not go very well. <laughs> um, you got to let the delicacies be local delicacies. Regardless, though, let's talk about this. Detroit. Steelers I've talked all week about what the Steelers are going to do Mike Tomlin said yesterday the starters are going to play this is the Steelers dress rehearsal well Ben I'm going to be real with you and I've been on the lookout for this I've looked for Lions news what are the Lions going to do do we have any idea what Dan Campbell's going to do or is, are they going to see Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown are we going to see a dress rehearsal for the for the Lions or are we going to see the Steelers ones going up against the, Steel, uh, the Lions twos right away I think it's going to be Steelers ones versus Lions two. You know, Dan Campbell has really shied away from using their starters at all in the preseason. And I mean, that, that goes deep too. And it, there's a reason it's been quiet. The la- They've tried to do a scrimmage twice the last two weeks and they've done it. But like last week, Rakestraw, Arnold, Gibbs get hurt. This week, Panay Sewell goes down and the whole field goes silent for 10 minutes. So I, I, I think... Dan really likes to get his work in and joint practices or at their own facility. So I would be surprised if any of the big name lion guys were available for that game tomorrow. I think you're going to see twos, threes, fours, and some fives in there. And that's about it. <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting because the Steelers did play starters against both the Texans and the yeah. um, Bills. So this is actually the third straight game. The Steelers are running their starters <laughs> out there. Mike Tomlin having a like completely different philosophy <laughs> Uh, from Dan Campbell. It's completely crazy, but I don't even know if they necessarily were going to use this as a dress rehearsal, Ben, until you saw what happened last Saturday. The Steelers scored three points. Russell Wilson and Justin Fields have 13 drives and have scored a combined three points all year of this, these last two games. It has been ugly for Pittsburgh. So let's say, what can we see from Detroit, specifically on defense? I, I'm assuming, you know, defense is going to be very vanilla. Uh, just like every team is. But what is the base in Detroit? What are they going to run? What are we going to have to see Russell Wilson and Justin Fields overcome? Well, you're going to see a lot of man press coverage like 95% of the time, no matter who's out there at cornerback. And you're going to see an aggressive front like the Lions have been sending the heat in the preseason. Aaron Glenn's been trying to kind of piecing around some things with his defense because like they finally feel like they have the pieces to play his defense, which is aggressive, disruptive in the trenches and in your face at all three levels. (laughs) You know, so it's going to be in your face. And one of the main position battles the Lions do have going on right now is 
like their edge depth right now. So like you got guys like Mitchell Agude, Isaac Uquil, they're, they're playing for their lives. Matthew Betts last year, CFL defensive player of the year. I mean, these guys are playing for their lives. So I, I really do think it's going to be a blitz happy, a lot of press coverage from Kendall Vildor on the outside in your face type of stuff. But yeah, Glenn's really been playing around with stuff because he wants to play man coverage. They had to play a lot of zone last year, which was like, just such a, a break from what we expect and what we had seen. And I, I think we're going to get to see them play that new Orleans style defense, you know, a lot more like they've always wanted to since 2021. Okay. So that's a good test for the Steelers. They faced cover two last week, which was obviously Russ's yeah. nemesis. So I do wonder <laughs> if we, I, I, the Steelers did some light game planning this week. So I'm interested to see how that works. Did the, did the Lions do any light game planning this week? Did, did they use it as a mock or did they do lines versus lines for the most part? Uh, the, the first practice of the week was kind of mock game planning. And then Wednesday, the last time we had access was Lions on Lions scrimmage. It, it was a scrimmage, even with like a halftime break and stuff. And that is the reason why I'm like, you're not going to see a single starter from this team because they, they got their work in on Wednesday. So, yeah, there was, there was a little bit of that, but it was mostly Lions on Lions. That's that's how Dan Campbell likes it. <laughs> okay, so the Steelers did a whole mock week of just regular season. Oh, yeah. So. You know, uh, when they went to Tuesday, it was a mock Wednesday, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is going to be a little interesting to me then about how the Steelers are going to kind of go against those blitzes. But there's a lot I want to see specifically. I want to see Broderick Jones. He has struggled a lot on the right side. He's dealing with that elbow, but I want to see him have a good game. And it seems like the Lions have the edge depth to test him a little bit um, because obviously – the, the idea for the Steelers is to start Troy Falton and win him. Um, but if he can't play at a high level, it's going to be Dan Moore still out there. And then the receivers. I want to see the receivers as well um, against the Lions press coverage. We haven't really seen them be pressed a lot um, outside of, you know, Joey Porter Jr. getting up on them, which is which is going to be fun. Um, yeah. So I'm interested to see that as well. So some good tests on the offensive side of the ball. What, what can we expect from Dan Campbell? Um, what can we expect from this? Uh, Lions offense again the Steelers defense not really um, one that I'm concerned about and I don't expect them to play TJ Watt Manko Fitzpatrick mm. Cam Hayward Patrick Queen I think the defense is going to rest but what what can we expect to see on the opposite side of the football well one area you might see some names uh, is the wide receiver battle the wide receiver battle between Jameis or not but be behind Jamison Williamson and Amon Ross St. Brown nobody has stepped up and won that wide receiver three job in Detroit right now so I do think it's going to be a heavy dose of Donovan Peoples-Jones, Caden Davis, Isaiah Williams. You're going to see Darius Fountain and Tom Kennedy in there. And there's going to be a heavy mix on the interior offensive line. Like, they are really working through those pieces. A couple undrafted rookies, Duke Clemens and Kingsley, the big dude from Florida last year, are really battling it out. And they've been trying Kingsley at guard. Had a rough showing in the scrimmage the other day. But, like, that that's a depth a depth battle. And then also the depth tight end position is up for battle too. James Mitchell. He's a Brad Holmes draft pick. There's only two of those in three years, not on the roster. So he's really, but he's got a little ground to make up, but the big news coming out of Detroit is, is Hendon hooker going to start this game or not? You know, that's what we're wondering. It sounded like they wanted to do it last week, but he was in protocol for a couple of days before that. But I do think you'll see Hendon hooker for a hefty dose of this game because Right now, they're saying Nate Sudfeld has the leg up on the QB2 job, but Hendon really started to flash something last week, and with a short week of game prep against the Chiefs, too, and I, I just think if they can get Hendon Hooker out there for like two and a half, three quarters, then that, that, that's, that's, that's something for Lions fans to really dig into tomorrow because he, he has been a pretty fascinating thing to watch, try and get his legs back under him. I like Tendon Hooker uh, at Tennessee. Yeah. I remember seeing him at, at Virginia Tech because uh, <laughs> I covered Pitt, and I remember seeing him torch right. them. So I remember him coming on the scene uh, over there in Blacksburg. So I, I, I'm interested to see that. Also, that would be a completely different challenge from what the Steelers yeah. have faced this offseason, a guy that's more mobile and is willing to run. And obviously they have – a lot of practice I can practice doing that because <laughs> Justin Fields runs a lot. Um, but I, I'm interested to see how that would work. So do you think we will we'll see Jamison Williams at all? Um, and, and if so, will he play slot outside? The Steelers have a, have a slot battle that they have to decide between Beanie Bishop and Thomas Graham. So that's of note. I do not think it'll be Jamison Williams at all tomorrow. He has not played in the preseason yet. I don't think he will play. And the Lions are trying – like Isaiah Williams is an undrafted rookie that's really impressed in the preseason around here. And they're trying to find out ways to get him involved. So I think you'll see Isaiah Williams in the slot, X, Zing it up. Like they're trying to find a reason not to keep this kid on the roster right now. 
probably no Nelson, no St. Brown, no Khalif Raymond. It's going to be, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how deep they go with not playing their starters. It's like the cutoff point is like beyond Khalif Raymond. So yeah, it, it's going to be, they're trying, they're trying to find someone to win that wide receiver three or the wide receiver four job. And just, it, it just hasn't happened yet. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, no no recognizable names outside of Detroit in this one. <laughs> okay, yeah, no no Laporta, no Ragnow, any no. of those guys you're probably not going to see out there. So, and again, I think the Steelers are going to match that for the most part defensively, but offensively, yep. Russ and Justin Fields are going to be the, the <laughs> story to watch here. So talk to me about what the, the Lions have kind of done against Hendon Hooker specifically because he's a mobile quarterback and, and kind of how the defense plays mobile quarterbacks and – Obviously, the read option game is going to be something that Russ and Justin will use. Uh, Russ basically said there's going to be no limitations this time around. His cap's 100%, so we'll see the full Russ. But how are they going to play that? Because I, I want to see specifically how Russ and Justin are going to approach this because the Steelers got to find a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And I, I'm fascinated to watch that play out in Detroit too. But, I mean, this is this is a weak spot for the Lions defense. I mean, I think there was a five-game stretch last year where they just got shredded by anybody with anything resembling dual threat ability. And I'll tell you, this Lions defense almost kept Justin Fields in De uh, Chicago. That's how bad they were against this guy. Like, that's what we were talking about earlier in the week in the media room was like, well, this is going to be a nice refresher for them this guy has torched them about every single time they've ever seen them but yeah it's uh it's gonna be a tough task for that reserve defense because th they've never really com committed to like a consistent way to attack these mobile quarterbacks and I do think that a large part of that has been Glenn playing defenses he really doesn't want to play with the zone and the stuff like that and then Aiden Hutchinson's the only guy in your defense that can get home on a <laughs> on a pressure but uh yeah it'll be a nice test for these backup guys just because Fields has torched him in the past. And I mean, that Seattle offense that Russ used to play in has torched him in the past. So, I mean, they have really struggled with the zone reads, the read options, anything like that. I mean, go back and watch Lamar Jackson just have the absolute 100 out of 100 perfect game on this defense last year. So it's, it's too bad. Some of the starters aren't playing because they could use work like this for sure, because this is the weak point of this defense is having a quarterback who can extend that pocket who can make plays with their legs. I mean, it's, it's been tough to watch for three years, four, five years running, excuse me. I mean, it, that, that is, that is extended two regimes. I mean, they almost kept Mitch Trubisky in Detroit too. <laughs> I'm in Chicago because of Detroit's defense too. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is really important for the Steelers. They have not, we have not seen signs of life on all. <laughs> it's crazy. In, in, unless Kyle Allen was manning the <laughs> offense at some point, Ben. So this is, very important for the Steelers. They need to see signs of something. Arthur Smith is obviously in there yeah. um, as well. Uh, and and so how how do they kind of manage against going, you know, against these uh, wide zone teams? How have they done against those types of teams before? Obviously, they have guys in the division with, you know, yeah. Floor and, and O'Connell that run a lot of wide zone and runs like that. How have they done uh, against those? Because I do want to see the Steelers run game as well. They've just been pass heavy. So I want to see the run game. Well, that is somewhere where the Lions were – a lot better last year was against the run was against the wide zone run that is so common in the nfc north and the teams that they play every year and uh there have been some changes in the defensive front you know uh terrell williams is in there from tennessee i mean they really are playing that like we're not just filling gaps we're we're getting in there and pushing upfield like they're really playing that tennessee style defense too that was under Vrabel and stuff but uh Man, that, that is somewhere where they excelled last year. I mean, there was a reason why they went into the half on San Francisco winning, too, because San Francisco couldn't run the ball on them. I mean, that, that's, that's, that was, like, the most shocking thing. And, like, the defensive line has been the biggest improvement area. Uh, I don't think we'll see McNeil. I don't think we'll see Levi. But I do think Kyle Pecco will go tomorrow. And that that's someone who is going to make Detroit's roster. So that's, like, as close to a starter as you'll see. And you might get a taste of Josh Pascal too, because that is something that he defends really well. And they continue to kind of play with his edge inside outside versatility. I mean, he was one of the best run defenders in college football when they took him in the second round a couple of years ago. And they've really started to kind of tap into that. He, he has a good feel for knowing how wide to get on those wide zone runs while still keeping things inside. So I do think if the Steelers don't show signs of life in the passing game with either of those quarterbacks, you have reason to be concerned. But if they have a bad running game, that's something that Detroit has excelled on the last year. So that is going to be like, you're going up against something that they really do take pride on. Like that, that's something they've been able to hang their hat on. 
Yeah, I mean, well, the Steelers' whole game plan is to run the ball and play yeah. ball control. So I think what's going to happen if that does, if this doesn't work, is the Steelers getting third and thirteen and with Russ. That is a death knell because you play cover two and just let them check it down. I'm not <laughs> going to happen. But uh, one last question I really do have for you about this this defense play action. We know this is going to be a big part of the Steelers' offense. They're going to run rollouts. They're going to run whole shots. You know Arthur Smith's offense. You've seen it. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of that. So how how are these linebackers, how are these DBs against play action, and, and what do you expect to see there uh, specifically about this line's defense against that concept? Well, the thing about it is if Jalen reeves Maben is playing like I kind of expect him to tomorrow, he has been there like – he was a big third down piece last year because, like I said, the play action, the dual threat for some reason had this defense in a just – a dizzy spin the last couple of years. So, but as the linebackers have improved, as the cornerbacks have improved, that play has gotten better. But I, I think you'll see a heavy dose of Jalen Reeves maybe in the first half. And he is pretty fantastic at reading those play actions, sticking with the running back, finding that tight end in the flats if they try to get it out quick. But yeah, that, I, I mean, we're, we're looking at guys trying to make the roster right now. Brandon Joseph has made a couple plays against the play action in preseason, had a great one in New York in the opener. If, if Atu Melifanwu goes tomorrow, they might try and get him in the slot some tomorrow. They're, they're toying around with those slot and safety guys. And if he can show something in the press, especially against the play action, because he has been a little quarterback happy, you know, he sees that quarterback keep that ball. He goes for him a little too aggressively sometimes because he is that good on the blitz. But if he can show a little comfort in the slot, I think there's going to be eventually a pretty healthy rotation of Malafonwu, Joseph, and Branch between those couple of spots. But yeah, it's uh, th- that'll be telling because like if you can do something that can help this defense that they struggled against last year, then that's going to be big. But yeah, if, they, if the Lions can get Russ into those third and 13s, That'll, that'll be a good test for them, too, to kind of play against that because that's that's where they broke down a lot the last couple of years. And if they can start to fill those gaps, that's how this team can get better after last year's success. Yeah, obviously. Uh, if the Steelers wants to play in the twos, you want to see signs of life. Yes. I want to see, <laughs> I want to see George Pickens, Moss and Kendall Vildor. And <laughs> if the Steelers are going to play everybody. Muth, yeah. Pickens, yeah. I think Najee's going to play. The only guy we know is not going to play is uh, Jalen Warren, Troy Faltano, and Roman Wilson, and that is because they are injured. So okay. um, so we're going to see the whole nine yards, and I'm really excited to see if this offense can even show something. They need to build something. This offense has been that bad so far this preseason. So um, we'll see if they can build something. Broderick Jones, I've talked about him. He yeah. needs to show something. I'm really excited to see him against some of these depth edges because even some of the depth edges have been hurting him this preseason. So want to see that as well. Ben, thanks for coming on. Tell them where they can read your stuff, follow you, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. My pleasure. Uh, MLive.com slash Lions, where you can find all my work. We run the Dungeon of Doom podcast over there. And I'm also on X uh, slash Twitter, whatever you want to call it, at Benjamin S. Raven. Make sure to follow me at Farable FB. Check out Penn Live slash Steelers to check out more Steelers stuff. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell for more here from the Steelers Blitz on Penn Live. Folks, thanks for watching.